Oh, whoops. Testing. Test. Test. Okay. Good, good. All right, we have sights and sounds. Back to back. Hello everyone, my name is Allie, I'm from okay to be fat because it is okay to be fat Hello and welcome to your Yakuza and Like a Dragon stream We stream all the Yakuza and Like a Dragon games This is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth Hello and welcome Ah, it's Will, hello, it's nice to see you Oh boy A little bit of a day A little bit of a day That's okay, we're gonna have a nice time Hey, it's Gab Pasta. Hey. Oh. Everybody hurt. We um oh yeah, I couldn't get my <sighs> Give me the shark fin, damn it. Are we all are I don't know if we're all having a Monday. I had a little bit of uh A little bit of frustration that became a big I, I I had a big old frustration and I'm having a little trouble getting past it it's it's hard um yeah I would like for it to go away and yet it is not ah uh, thank you things like went things are fine everything went fine I am just uh mad about it a little <laughs> about things that I can't really discuss uh, in an open forum um I have a kind of whole week's panic in one day so I guess I'm having a Monday too oh no I'm sorry to hear that I hope that you feel better yeah, it. seaweed I'm going to three more times, and if I don't get the ding-dang shark fin, I'm going to give up. My frustration is a little thing in the grand scheme of things, but it's making me heckin' frustrate, too. Because I don't want to be mad about the big things. Ugh, I'm sorry to hear that. I just, like... Don't ask me for suggestions on how to fix a thing, and then be like... Yeah, I didn't really want suggestions on how to fix the thing. What the fuck did you ask for? God. Like, no, we're just gonna leave it broken. The fucking why? Yeah, it. Every fucker needs something this week, and I haven't had time to get the things I need done because of that. Oh! That is... Ugh, that's a that's a that's a rammer itself right there. I had to end a friendship I didn't want to over the thing that I said earlier this week. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's always tough when you have to end a friendship because people won't act like adults. Is like at a certain point, it's just like okay, but it's grown-up time now. I'm not trying to play. Fish. One more. Oh no, Will. I'm sorry. That's tough. All right. Uh. Give me yep, shark! No! 
This is butt. This is full on butt. Um. So let's uh. To recap, what happens on the last stream? Because I just don't want to dwell on the things that are butt, because it sucks. And I can't do anything about it. And the people who can do something about it have made it very clear that they're not going to. So, like, what is the point? Uh, give me the shark fin. So, um, if you missed Friday's stream, you you missed the true lunker. That's not the lunker. Damn it. I keep saying this is going to be the last time, but I really want the shark fin. Um... Yeah, Friday's stream was quite the lunker of plot. Um, for both yep, Kiryu doesn't. and Ichiban. You missed, you missed the lunker, um, but the VODs, I, the VODs there. Um, so, I, uh, I encourage people to maybe uh, investigate that if they want to see the like good plot and not my uh, crappy uh, retelling of it but like y'all here's what had happened okay what happened was Ichiban let's go yeah we'll go there first first of all Ichiban had a, a kind of a talk with his mom um and their relationship is complicated which i like i like it when they let family relationships be complicated and this one is complicated and i like that um it was a big deal it gave me uh a little you know in my heart um let's eat everything i will get everybody their stuff back Great. Ichiban is not calling Akane-san his mom, and I think that's okay. <laughs> He's not calling her mama. Um, and she apologized for not being there. And, um... And it was... It was it was sad and sweet and sad. Um Yeah. Um I mean and she like she was okay with it. He's still trying to figure out how he feels and she didn't press. And I liked that quite a bit. Um we don't always get that Oh, there's a safe. We don't always get that. I mean, I think there's a similar thing in the JoJo season Diamond is Unbreakable where um, Joseph also does not press Josuke to call him dad, which is good. He should not. Yeah, JoJo mentioned. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's complicated. And I'm glad that they let it be complicated. Um, I think Ara Araki does, like, really good, like, subtle work, I think, that he doesn't always get credit for. I mean, it is truly a bizarre adventure, so he's definitely not always getting credit for his more, uh, subtle characterizations. But some of his, um, character work with, like, different characters' relationships, like, familial relationships, I think is very good. Um, like, you know, there's, there's stuff with Jolene and, and Jotaro in, um, uh, Stone Ocean that's really, really well done. Oh, Jojo mentions Jolene. Jolene is, is awesome. And, like, I think that, um, I think it was... Where are we at? Okay, 23, 21, 16, 22. All right, this is fine. Um, the spirit of Dolly took you. 
Oh, well, I mean, Jolene is clearly named after Dolly, because they're all named after songs, so. Um. You had, a dr you had a dream that I'll find funny? Tell me about it. Um, but yeah, I think, like, uh, one of the things that I thought was really well done is, like, I think it took a lot of courage to make Jotaro kind of a bad dad. In, like, an understandable way, right? But, like, he's not there. And, like, what do kids want? They want you to be there. Um, and so, like, yeah, he wasn't there for, you know, some good reasons oh, so and like some, like... Jotaro, please just explain literally anything to your daughter. Ever! But, like, he didn't explain stuff to her, and so by the time she got old enough to kind of understand, she was already so mad about it. Um, and, like, I... I would never tell someone not to be mad about it. You know what I mean? I think she was justified in being mad about it. But I think that they did a good job of showing that, like... He didn't do a good job communicating with her, and that's where he kind of messed up. And that... When she's able to see things from his point of view, then Jolene makes the personal decision for herself to forgive her father and that he does show up for her when it's the most important um which but that that doesn't like it doesn't change the fact that he wasn't there before but that she can like forgive him and move forward i think is really excellent i mean i think that that's a really that's subtle and like kind of beautiful like demonstration of like and it's not that she has to be like it it was wrong for me to be upset about this it's like no it was all right that you were upset about it but like you know you can decide if you want to to change your mind and to to forgive <laughs> <laughs> if Dolly Parton came out as a JoJo fan and a producer <laughs> and got a nudie suit made for her that was all JoJo references, I mean, that would be absolutely sick. Uh, I feel like, uh, I feel like, uh, Miss Dolly, uh, bless her, is is of the generation that's not like really that into anime so it's probably not anything that we're gonna see but it would be amazing did we get told why Jotaro was out saving the ocean was there a deeper point or was it his choice because of interest now granted I've not read all of the manga um although I should love to at some point um I have not but as far as I am aware, I did read the entire Stone Ocean manga. Um, as far as I know, he just wanted to become an oceanographer. <laughs> it's a good goal. I like it. Um... I mean, I, I believe that we don't get told, I mean, it, this is another way that I think that, like, Araki is very subtle in some of the things that he's doing, yeah. is that, like, we don't really get told exactly what Jolene sees when she looks at, um, Jodora's memory discs. Like, she just does it. Um, and then from that her attitude kind of softens and changes like she can see his point of view and probably I don't know if she saw stuff about Dio but that was pretty fucked up I mean he was like a literal teenager um but like insofar is like someone saying here is the reason specifically why he acted that way no one says it outright ever I 
people have surmised and one presumes that I think based on Jotaro's character and his prior actions, it is a reasonable uh, assumption that the reason why he kind of ran away from his wife and daughter was that he was afraid that if he was around that there would be stand users and that they would be in danger. Um, I mean, especially considering how he reacts when he first discovers his stand where he gets himself put into jail to like protect other people from what he at that point can only conceptualize as him being possessed by a demon so like yeah I think it's pretty it's pretty easy dots to connect that like Jotaro left because he was afraid of what would happen if he stayed but like I think that they don't say it and I think that's better um, because like it doesn't matter what his reasons are that the impact on his daughter was that he wasn't there and she wanted him to be there because that's her dad and so like I think it's I think it's more subtle I think it's not a question of who is right and who is wrong in like an objective sense because like probably they're both right like I don't think you know that it is unreasonable for Jotaro to assume that being around his family would be a danger but that doesn't like remove his like when you remove yourself from people and they love you that hurts them Kid you? Kid you? We're talking to you as well, Dad. I appreciate that deeply as someone with a similar situation, Dad wise. I also like the storytelling aspect of leaving it private and not specified. Yeah, I think it's like. It's kind of left up to you to surmise and like granted the uh the pieces are there you know um but yeah i i don't think that like i think it's you know it's nice it's subtle um and like that's what i mean when i say that the uh that the 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 manga where people are like constantly posing and screaming has some really beautiful, subtle, familial moments, but it does! <laughs> okay, so the other thing that happened in the last stream, and this has to do with Kiryu, uh... So... Date called again, and Akiyama showed up, so we got to see Akiyama. Um... And, uh, Akiyama was heckin' pissed that he was left out of the, uh, the kind of collaboration between Date and Kiryu to, uh, hide the fact that Kiryu was still alive. Akiyama was like, I never, I never freaking believed you, which is true, he didn't. Um, and he was, like, extremely heckin' mad about it. He socked Kiryu and Date in the face. And then... And then... Date-san's like... Alright, friendo, my best friend in the world, let us cut to the actual chase here. Don't you want to see the person you want to see the most? And I was like, <gasps> It's Haruka! So... We went to Kamurocho. We went to... Serena. We were... Mm, Kiryu was literally at the door. He was at the door. He was behind the door. Haruka and baby Haruto, who is... is a... He's a big out. He's a big boy now. 
He's in elementary school. He got big. He's not a baby baby anymore. He's still a baby, but he's not an infant, which he was the last time we saw him. And they were there, and Akiyama was talking to him, and Kiryu left! He left! He did not open the door! He did not see his daughter and his grandson. And then... <sighs> and, and then... It was like, where's Date-san? He was supposed to be at this fun party and was not. And so it turns out Date-san got kidnapped by the Daidoji. Which is the evil organization that, that basically the Daidoji forced Kiryu, through threatening his babies, to work for them, and he left! He was like... And... I hate the Daitoji, I hate them so much! They threaten the babies to make Kiryu come to heal and work for them as a super spy. And I gotta be honest, I just don't think that the Spider-Man powers were worth it, okay? I just don't. Like, the rocket shoes were cool. But, hey, it's four seed. I'm recapping the saddest VOD for people who were not there. Then... That Daidoji made Kiryu promise to never see Date again. Which he did. So, so now we can see. never see Date either. Ever again. Hey, it's Mercat. Mm. And then Date-san was like, but why? Why didn't you open the door? All of this would have been worth it if you had just seen the babies. And Kiryu's like, what is the point in seeing them if I'm just gonna die from cancer very soon? <sighs> and then Date asked Kiryu you said that there's nothing that they could do. Is that true? It could have helped them though. I mean, God Pasta Akiyama tried to make this point, and Kiryu was not trying to hear it. Um. And. <sighs> And Date basically asked him, Are you sure? Are you 100% sure? That there's literally nothing that anybody could do to help you. Like, so he's like, so many people have looked up to you and counted on you and like maybe and been inspired by you and maybe if, if they heard that the dragon of Dojima face down death itself it would give them courage and Kiryu said yeah there probably is something that they can do but I don't want to do it because what good is it to be living in a world where I can't see my babies And, and then we all cried. And Date told him, Maybe you will be under the, the thumb of the Daidoji 
But the only way to find out if that's gonna change is for you to stay alive. And here do you left? So that's where we're at. Yes. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, it's frustrated crying time because it's just like... We have been... Like, we went and saw Kamaki. He still has sternum abs. Although they did tone it down slightly. <laughs> slightly. Slightly toned down sternum abs on... Uh, Old man Kamaki. Um, and I'm just like, come on, you got to fight Kamaki again. Don't you want to live? <laughs> this thing where they won't let him have his name, won't let him be himself, won't let him see his kids, won't let him see his grandchild. Won't let him see his best friend. He has to lie to everybody, and he's so fucking bad at it. Like, he's depressed. And who wouldn't be? We also saw Pocket Circuit Fighter again! Who's had a little bit of a glow up since Gaiden? They gave him a, a real. They turned that age knob up to Crypt Keeper, and then they turned it back down about 30 years. Which I think is pretty appropriate. Ah! Poor pocket circuit fighter. He's he's really he's really been through it. This guy and his cardboard wall. Whatever, man. Yeah, so that's all the stuff that happened. It was real sad. I don't even remember what we're supposed to be doing. He deserves a vacation in some respect. Ooh, very nice. Three! But yeah, that's... That's what happens. She breaks my heart. Just grab down the VOD if you want to hear me, uh... Screaming no, no, no in the background. I like do intend at some point to make a video about this game, and I don't know some of this footage. I don't know. Like, I'm like, I should be quiet so I can use this footage, and instead, I'm just like furiously being like, no, no. Oh, you have happy news? I love happy news. Y'all remember the time in Yakuza 5 when they made us, like, individually send, like, money for presents to each one of the babies because Kiryu was, like, hiding out very poorly in Fukuoka 
And like, it was one of the most goddamn heartbreaking things that we had to do until now! Shit freaking ruins me! I, I mean, I'm kind of, I guess I'm, I'm just kind of waiting until we get, like, done with this game, because I, I don't have footage until we get done with the game, and then I'll have footage of everything. Oh, that's so nice, you're flying? You're gonna go fly and see Mercat, Oh. If the g game doesn't let Kiryu see his kid at least once, I will riot. Oh, <laughs> oh just making like <laughs> just dying seal noises. <laughs> it breaks my heart. I'm excited for you, Gapasa. Yay! <laughs> over here this one's real twisty uh, we, we congratulated all roguelites for now being inside Yakuza congratulations to all roguelites for being inside Yakuza now congratulations welcome to the team ooh that is a long layover though eight hours woof That's how you know it's love. I just ordered a roguelike synth module? What does it mean? Oh, yay! I'm happy for you both! I just have to decide if I want, like, the next... Because, like, I'm working on art, but, like, I mean, and the art is making the YouTube take a long time, but I'm enjoying the art, so I don't care. Um, but, like, the next big non-art-focused video, like, m you know, me making... Uh, silly art pieces. I got the bat nips. I got your Jordan Peterson suit, but I kind of have those bucketed in my head as like a separate thing. Um, also, like I'm almost done with the extra stuff I needed to make for bat nips. I made y'all know the old like Batman um like symbol where it was like a bat and it said Batman and it was like Batman's face. I redid that, but now it says bat nips. <laughs> um It creates a new rhythm every day based on the phase of the moon. Everyone with the module gets the same rhythm rhythm on the same day and then it's replaced with a new one. Oh, that sounds cool. Oh, safe! Give me a safe. No, I didn't go everywhere. Alright. So go back. Go back! Um. Like, I do definitely want to make something. Basically, I've got like two things kind of in mind. Maybe y'all can help me pick um, Because it's it's basically a toss-up between a video about Jojo and a video about Yakuza um, The Jojo video would be an entry in anime art school where I talk about um, Highlight and shadow um and like, 
do like the whole like this is how 2d artists like use and think about light and shadow you know you know and then i get to be like uh i get to do the the jojo thing that uh araki does in um steel ball run where i'm like bam here is Here's a diagram, an anatomical diagram of the inside of the human eyeball. Um, because in order to talk about how, like, light and shadow work in 2D art, you do have to talk about the human cornea. It's just un- it's just- it's just not- it, it, you can't avoid it. In my opinion. Just like, you know... I don't know that you necessarily have to talk about rods and cones... Um, to talk about color theory, although it can't hurt. But like, you, you really must talk about how the cornea is a flat surface. Just, I know it's not actually flat, but for the purposes of art theory, we treat it like it is. Um, and it works, so it's fine. Um, but basically, it's like our human brains take what is essentially functionally a flat image and then describe that for ourselves in 3D space because human brains are wild good at that. Um, and like, what 2D artists are generally doing when they're doing 2D Western classical realism in the Renaissance style is they're kind of hacking the brain and how, like, the eye already works functionally. That's the short version. <laughs> it's already fairly complicated, but it's true! Now, that's why we have to talk about the inside of the human eye. So that we can talk about Chariot Requiem. <laughs> Is it interesting? Or are you talking about, uh, the, like, cool... NetHack synth mo uh, mo uh, uh, mod, not mod, module. That's the word. Um, cause like I don't know if other people think that the art theory stuff is important, but damn it, I do. Um, choshi <sighs> detektaze. Art theory is... You were talking about the brain hack and art... Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure. We're having two conversations. So sometimes, you know, it's a little hard to follow, play the game, and have just really aggressive ADHD at the same time. Hello, sir! Because, like, art theory is not, like... It's not necessary, okay? Like, it's not. Like, it's explanatory. It explains things to you, but, like, you don't have to do it. Like, it doesn't tell you what you, like, have to do. It's not a bunch of rules. It's just, like, these types of things tend to elicit this type of reaction in a, in a person with a normative eye, human eyesight. And if you are looking for that reaction, then this is the path to take. And if you're not, then who cares? Yeah, box on head guy is invincible while he's got the box on head. Which is irritating. Sir, it's irritating! <laughs> 
So that's one option. So in order to explain why Chariot Requiem at the end of um, Golden Wind does make sense if you are a 2D artist in the Western realism tr like Renaissance tradition, it does make sense. Um, but oh, I should have stolen from him. Boo! Whoops. Ah, fuck it. But, like... So, I thought I would kind of roll up... Because the, the, the short version is a uh, spoilers for the video I haven't made yet. King Crimson punches a sun behind his head. He has a sun behind his head. Everyone has a sun behind their head. It's their, like, soul. And so he, <laughs> he punches the sun behind his head. <laughs> because... <laughs> because... <laughs> it's not that funny, but it is to me. Um, because nobody can approach Chariot Requiem, who's doing a, a soul swap thing, um, without having their stand attack them. And, and the stand is kind of like a part of a manifestation of your soul, right? And so, like, in order... <laughs> and the way that King Crimson figures it out is, or Diavolo, is that, like, whoever approaches Chariot Requiem, like, his shadow moves. So he's not in the same place. And so, like, they're... <laughs> so... He figures out how to approach him by reasoning as as <laughs> only a 2D realism artist would that anytime there's a shadow there has to be a light source. Which is true. Mm. And so he finds the light source. <laughs> and that's why it's good and it makes <laughs> we gotta help this guy. Rescue. It's good, it makes sense! So he has to find the light source that it is his soul, and so he punches himself in the soul. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> um. Oh, it's so good. It's so good, and I'm not making fun of it. I genuinely love it and think it's really clever. I'm laughing the laughter of delight. Um... So I thought I would like use that in anime art school to kind of like roll up like just the idea of like how we describe light and shadow as 2D artists along with like a, a, a thingy that I just want to talk about because I think it's neat. Um, And then, like, include, like, like, before we can explain Chariot Requiem, first we must examine the interior of the human eye. Um, I just think that's good and fun. Um, but also, like, to include, to potentially include some, like, exercises for, for baby artists of, like, hey, um... Here's how you should be looking at it. Because it's not even a question, I think. I think the problem for baby artists is that, like, it's... Oh, she's mad now. Is it's not really a question of, like... 
I think sometimes people are overlearning techniques. They're like technical, like they're overlearning specific techniques without the accompanying. Here's why we do this. Or, like, not even here's why we do this, but, like, here's how you should be looking at this. Because so much of, like, initial art training, for me, was about training my eye on how to see things. Um... And, like, I'm working on a painting right now, um, I was showing it to Josh, and, like, I had, with the oil paints, painted, um, the, in, like, uh, the, it's like garage, like, it was like a white garage and a driveway, and I painted them both, uh, like, uh, cobalt blue. And it's like, okay, so you, you may be wondering why this white garage is blue. Um, and I'll tell you, he, he wasn't, I mean, I don't know if he was or not, but I just preemptively was like, let me explain to you, because nobody, this is why I have to make YouTube videos explaining art to people, because otherwise I'm just torturing Josh. I, I should have been an art teacher, but, but, but people made that not be a job. So... It's because the way that the photo was taken for this um, piece that I'm doing, that like the shadows off of the white are extremely blue. It's reflecting the sky, which is very blue that day. And so the shadows on this white wall have gotten really blue. And because of the way the oil painting works, you want to put that in first. And so oil paintings always look absolutely honkers, bedonkers until they don't. Um, it looks like you really, really don't know what you're doing. Um, but like, you have to really look at it, right? And not just think to yourself it's a shadow shadows are gray and it's like well not necessarily it, it it really depends because shadows are like reflecting light off of the thing that they are a shadow of so frequently shadows are not gray or black they're a darker a very dark version of a color that's already there in this case, the sky. Um, in some case, like if you paint an orange, a lot of times the shadow of the orange is not like a gray. It's just like a really dark orange. Because that light will reflect into... It all reflects into everything else. Um, especially since color is just reflected light waves. Um... But yeah, I thought I might, like, do that and, like, maybe some exercises for people to be like, Hey, if you're not sure where the shadow should be coming, not the color stuff, that's, that's too much. That's too much for a beginner, I think. But, like, to just take something that's in, like, let's say full grayscale, right, then, you know, are you looking, where's your light source, right? And then to do some, like, little exercises to show people how you can practice putting up a different light source, right? Like, you know, get a flashlight, get, borrow someone else's, borrow someone else's phone. Um, use the flashlight on the phone. Uh, a, a desk lamp, right? And then you, what you do is you set up, like, a... Um, if you're do, you know, if you're trying to do, like, 
uh, character montage or something, like, characters standing together, if you're trying to do, like, I would just start, honestly, with some, like, uh, still life stuff, like, you got, a, you got a couple, you got a salt and pepper shaker, got, uh, got a bottle of ketchup, um, you know, got, like, a couple of pens and pencils, just put some stuff arranged on a table, and then, you know, kind of, like, L turn the overhead lights off and then use a flashlight at different angles and then you take a picture with your own phone right if the light source is here take a picture you can see where the shadows are if you do it in a way that it's really I'm waving my arms around now like you can see me um, uh, if you do it in such a way that the difference is really stark then you can see it that helps you see it if you do it where it's like really really stark with a very strong single light source and move it around different places take photographs and then draw from the photographs that you took you will see it and once you can see it then you can do it but you can't do it until you can see it I would love the shadows breakdown or any art breakdown. I'm always looking for videos like that, even if it's stuff I'm comfortable with. Well, thank you. I, it's it's like a thing that I feel like is a little bit lacking in because the, the children are getting their art educations from YouTube because it's they're, they, there's not a job no more. Um, so like a lot of times what they're getting is like specific techniques and speed paints and explanations of how to use like different software how to use tablets that stuff's all great it's not that there's anything wrong with the good versions of that but there is a level of like okay but like now you're making your own compositions and you're missing the basics like how do we set up a composition what what how do we do light and shadow where is your light source Where's your light source? And like, you do need both. Um, and I just was like, I, I, I was, you know, I like to be helpful. And so I was like, well, maybe some people will find something like that helpful. Um, like, but the other idea that I had, I have, um, is basically, I have two ideas for Yakuza, and my two Yakuza ideas are, um, discussing how the Yakuza games, um, approach the concept of player choice, which I feel like is pretty different than a lot of AAA video games, um, and I think that could be really interesting. And then the, the, the last one is just like, I, I want to make the claim, and I think that this is true, that, uh, this is the best Yakuza game since Yakuza 0, that it could potentially for some people be even That's better than Yakuza that. 0. I am I am I think I think it might be even for me. Honestly, like cuz for a long time I was just like every Yakuza game is a great game. Like we are spoiled for choice on like fantastic games. But Yakuza 0 is the best one. Like, it's just the best one. It's the best one. And now I'm like, I don't know. This one might be the best one. It might be the new best one. If you've played all the other games. If you haven't, then it probably isn't. But, like, if you have, then I think it is. Um, and, like, I have some takes that might be considered a little spicy in the community. Like, um... The ending of Yakuza 6 was bad, actually. But I'm right. Is the thing. Um, 
But I can't really talk about what I would put in that video yet because it would be like a spoiler. It missed? That sucks! It is really a good game. Like, I can't even explain to you yet why people think it's a bad game. But I made a list off of uh, some stuff that I saw on Thritter. Twi Thritter? That's not what? Come on. My mouth is broken. I saw some stuff on Twitter and I was like, No! This is wrong! I wanted to do a few things in between doing another video about JoJo so that people wouldn't think that I had just decided to turn into a JoJo YouTuber. Um, because, like, I, uh, I want to talk about, uh, Yakuza 2. <laughs> and art. Also, at some point, I don't know when I'm going to do this, but I have some plans uh, to make a video about Tom. I'm going to light him up on YouTube. Yeah, that's why I've been, uh, that's why I've been, uh, filming myself oil painting. Yeah. Yes. Bio father. But I'm not quite like ready in my heart to do that yet. Uh, Cause like I just need I need some like moments of like I don't know. Cause I'm gonna have to like write stuff down. Probably. It's hard to talk about. I've considered like. I have a thingy. All right, fine. I have considered writing a script and then hiring a voice actor. for at least part of it. Let 
Or like, maybe like asking people to read part of it. I don't know. I've been keeping a diary. And I'm like, can I ask people to read my diary? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really like gotten my head straight around that yet. And there's also like there's a big project, right? Like some of this stuff I'm filming as I'm getting like back into my um like skill set, but like what I really want to be able to film for the Tom roast is um I want to build a canvas and use it and then like string it with um special fabric and like use it to make um the manga panel where Jotaro's stand discs get stolen which is such a fucking choice panel it's so good it's ridiculous it's so good <laughs> Um, but like, I, I want to use that as part of the framing for it, and um, I'm not ready to make that painting yet and so I'm kind of like and so I'm ready to make that painting um oh thank you god pasta that's very sweet um I mean kind of one of the things is I'm just like I'm gonna make whatever I want to make and if I want to make really high class high like concept anime fan art with oil paints I guess I fucking will I guess I've paid enough I've done enough of what other people wanted like Sometimes I ask for suggestions, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna do it. And, uh... Sometimes I'm not taking suggestions, you know what I mean? But I'm just kinda like, I don't... I wanna do it for me. And like, when I'm ready to make that painting, we'll get ready to start roasting Tom. But I don't think it's time for that yet. Oh, you know what? Check this out, y'all. <laughs> oh, for God's sake! You doing a rooting for me dance in the kitchen? Thank you. That's very sweet. I was like, it's all academic at this point because the current status is, uh, I gotta finish, I gotta finish this, uh, I gotta finish this Batman thing, y'all. Oh, 
out of hiding and he has a cold stop it this sucks The cats are trying to steal your sandwiches? Rude. We call Reggie Mr. Underfoot. Uh, cause, oh boy, does he sure like being underfoot. It's like, come on, Mr. Underfoot. Can I move five feet away from where you are? And he's like, no. No. Come back. Come back and give me some ham. Like, buddy, he has become an extremely solid boy. Oh, you've got a cat news redemption. All right. Meow, 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 meow. Cat news, cat news. Um, I don't know. What do y'all think, like, uh, before I get into cat news, like, the, the, JoJo thing or the Yakuza thing? It wouldn't be this game. It would just be player agency. I'd probably use Yakuza s s 5 to discuss it. Um. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a weirdo! <sighs> Alright, cat news. Um. Reggie had a little bitty mat in his back and I brushed it out and when I um, had to pull the mat out, he made a quack noise at me. He went, Mah! Um, what else has Reggie done recently? Um, he... Reggie has this thing that he's been doing lately where when he's doing something that he knows that I don't want him to do and there's two things there's two things total that I don't want him to do I don't want him to rip up the couch and I don't want him to attack other cats he has scratchers he doesn't need to do that and I guess you do never know what to expect. It's like, why would someone hide in a safe like that? I don't know, Kiryu. I, I do not know. Um, but yeah, so like when he's, when he's uh, ramming out and he's getting that like, he's all zazzed up. Oh, for, for, oh, for God. Okay. He's like real zazzed and he's doing that thing where he's like, da da da, ah cha 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 cha. Like in his head, I'm like, Reggie, come on. And he's like, ah cha cha. Um, I'm like, buddy, stop it. Stop it. So, um, so I'll be like, all right, fine. I guess we need, I guess we need a little bit of time out so we can calm down. And I start wa I walk towards him with purpose. You know, like I'm 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 going to take you into the bedroom now so that you can have a time out. Um <laughs> He'll be like, "Ah ha ha!" And he runs into the bedroom and puts himself in the bedroom. He just scooty scoots into the bedroom himself. Cuz he's a weird boy. 
But, um, I'm like, buddy, if you wanted to go in the bedroom, you just can. He, he does, he absolutely does know. Like, he knows. He knows what he's not supposed to be doing. Yeah, he just gets a little too zazzed, and then he has to go to, he has to go sit on the bed. And then by the time, like, we put him in timeout, 15 minutes, go open the door, and then he can come out. 100% of the time, at the point where we're like, alright, you can come out now, that you've calmed down some, he, um, he doesn't want to. Like, yesterday, Josh was trying to get him out of the bedroom by offering him treats, like Crunchables. He didn't want Crunchables. He, he just wanted to stay in the bedroom. Yeah, he loves it. It's not punishment. Like, you can't punish a cat. That's silliness. It's just like, alright, buddy, you need to clearly need to have a little calm down time. Um. He doesn't think. What if he thinks he has to be naughty to be allowed in the bedroom? The thing about that, Will, is that, like, he will put himself in the bedroom whenever he wants to, as long as we're not sleeping. There's, like, little cat stairs that he can go up. And does! Like, he just climbs the little stairs, gets on the bed, and then snoozles there. Like, he knows he can go in there and get on the bed anytime he wants. He just wants to be a little silly boy. Because he's a little silly boy. He's just a little silly guy. Um... Tifa is con is continuing her campaign of I'm out and about remove this this Philistine from my sights um because she hates Reg because she hates everyone she hates everyone who isn't me and Josh and my sister-in-law Amanda she loves Amanda and she likes she loves Josh and me and she hates everyone else I don't understand. It's like, when Amanda was petting her, I was like, oh, She never does that! She hates everyone! Because she does hate everyone! But, she's a complicated lady. There's someone incredibly tough waiting past that door. Hell yeah, let's go in there. She doesn't even like other people in the family. <laughs> She's just like Samantha. <laughs> She's a mysterious lady. <sighs> Alright. Who wants to see... Date Sons? Pound mate. Let me, um, alright, so Foxy is just chilling. You know, Foxy has her little pillows she likes to sit on. She likes to look at the squirrels. Um, Foxy's just chilling, except when she's trying to stand with all of her, her weight on one of my kneecaps to grind it into dust. And then she's not chilling, because if I'm like, Foxy, please move, she's like, Nurr. Only kneecap sh only kneecap shattering will do. Only kneecap shattering grind into dust. And I'm like, ow! How does such a tiny baby exert so much force? It is a mysterious mystery. Alright, who wants to see Date? Her stem is my knees down. It's a mess. She will sit on Josh's lap like a normal cat. But when it comes to me, it's all like shin and kneecaps acrobatics while I am like sh sometimes shrieking in pain. Uh, I don't, I don't get how she does it. Like, I'm like Reggie. 
is so much bigger than you, but you are the one destroying my my entire lower body. What is wrong with you? And she's just like, meh, meh, meh. She doesn't care. <laughs> she, Freya does that, and she has three paws, and, and is like, no pounds. <laughs> the tiny babies are like, I can stand, and, I, and you're like, oh god, please no! Also for Foxy, I'm about to do Date. Um, we've been brush. I've been, I put a brush next to the seat that she likes to sit on my lap, so I can brush her when she's sitting on my lap. And she's getting a lot more brushing, and it's better. So, that's good. Oh yeah, you gotta brush brush the tiny lady. She is an ex she's like part Persian so she's gotta get brushed or she just gets the worst mats so she doesn't like it but it's gotta happen all right here we go Date son come and rescue us call your best friend dad Delivery. <laughs> Makoto Date, no bullshit detective. He's here. Give me your money. Let's see. Oh, we got it. Go. Uh, Y'all remember in 7 when I did this to Saijima? <laughs> oh yeah! I love how they lean into the memeing. It's so good. Murkat says that was beautiful. God Pasta says clap clap for Date. Indeed. Oh, what do we got? I still don't have it yet. Boo! Squid Cannon! Oh no, it's withdrawal symptoms! Oh, he's fiending. Joe, please get some levels! We haven't seen this one yet with Kiryu. Oh yeah, we did. I just did this, I forgot. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
Mmm. Nice! They are the flowers of violence, it's true. Oh, excellent. Warukunai kibundaze. Oh, I know what that means. I'm pretty sure it means not a bad feeling. He feels almost sarcastic as he smells the flowers. As I like the la da 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 da. So good. Good. Looks like that's the last floor. All right. Better head outside. Y'all, my roses came. When I get off the stream, we are planting roses. That last guy was one of their big players. Well done. I heard there's an even stronger enemy further down. Watch yourselves, all right? And remember, I'll be rooting for you. Ooh, a snake blade. That's nice. All right. I I want Kiwami drinks. Oh, hydration check. Glad he didn't have to fight another robot Michio. Uh. Dang it, robot Michio. Uh, posture check. Okay, sit up. Big stretch. Ooh. Ah. Whew. All right. Do you have Kiwami drinks? Please say yes. Sengoku coffees. All right. Where's the good machine? Where's the good machine? There's got to be a good machine. Come on. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Where is it? I do like iron ore. I need that for stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, there's got to be one over here, right? There's, like, a bajillion, uh, fingers over here. Hey. Do you got stuff? What do you got? Uh, shop. Coconuts. Great. We need coconuts. Uh, hello. Hi. Can I make things? I will take a fruit bowl. And one of these. And one of these. And one of these. Alright! Thank you! No! Dang it! Dang it! They're all the wrong machine! Are you the right one? Are you the right one? You can buy a whole tea set on the street? I guess! Ah! Give me the blood, Lord! Lord, give me the blood! Thank you for the, uh... For the redemption! <laughs> All right, now we're back. Back to the dungeon. We gotta go to the dungeon bottom of the dungeon. I think... Y'all didn't, like, magically acquire shark fins, did you? I don't think you did. I don't think you did! Boo! All right. Now... We have to change gerbs. I did not check Nightbot, but it seems like it's working okay. So, we'll just consider that, uh, fine. Um, I'm not quite at the point. We're not quite at the, ooh. <laughs> All 
Alright, Desperado. Um. Dang! I think. Ooh! Brown? All black? I don't know! These are all so good! Normal swimsuits. <laughs> uh. Oh, we've all got a little rip in the leg. That's cute. Alright, so. I really like that one. Thank you. Alright. For you. Tennis Ace. The Tennis Ace is kind of ridiculously OP. And the pattern shirt is so nice. Ooh. This is just too much pastel. Alright, we'll just do that. Although... Although... We could put her back into Hamako's outfit, which I'm going to do because it's very good. Uh, Joe, you need to stay where you are. Uh. <laughs> oh no! Everybody kind of has a color that's like associated with them. Ah. Probably... Yeah, I hate having status ailments is the thing. Oh, I got a new slot. All right. Bum, 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 bana. Bum, bum, ba, 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 ba. Namba, that looks great. Good job, Namba. Alright, um, cool. Alright, take me back. Take me back down there. Oh, man, Namba. Ooh! Challenge the dragon? What did we just get? Um. Have fun in there. Alright. Let's have fun in there. Oh, I forgot to check my gear. Dang! Ah, oh, I forgot to check my gear! Nice. Give me all your money. Let's see if I can get them all. I did. Stop! Uh, worst. Ah, 
Ow! Get out of there with those status ailments, dang it! Gotta check the gear. I started, I, so I finished the back of the nudie suit. And now, I am attaching googly eyeballs to it. As you do. Gotta, gotta get your googly eyeballs. My brother-in-law gave me so many googly eyeballs. <laughs> so many! And I'm, uh, I have two projects I'm using them on. <laughs> Nudie googlies! <laughs> it's party in the front. Um, Eldritch Horror in the back. You know, it's not that eldritch. I didn't realize until I started putting the eyeballs on there that, like, it very, very much looks like, uh... <laughs> it's got a little bit of a, like, biblically accurate cookie monster feel. <laughs> but also, whatever. Didn't I just get a thingy? Where... <laughs> Screw it. Gear. Gear none. None gear. None gear. Boo. Must fix. Alright. That's fine. That's better. What happened to that dragon amulet finger? Is that... Like... What is... Is that like... No? It's not a hat! No. Whatever. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm thinking about whether or not I want to, like, draw... Twitchy streamer, stop it! Stop it! Um. Well, there we go. I'm trying to decide if I want to draw a picture of Joe Rogan for the Joe Rogan cape for the nudie suit or if I just am gonna print out a picture I think in a way it would be kind of funny to have put this much effort into the rest of the outfit and then just not bother to draw Joe Rogan's face um, I think that's funny so it's probably what I am gonna do I was like, ah, you can draw this weird logo, and I was like, yeah, I can, but, like, should I? 
Wouldn't it be funnier if I didn't? No face him? What do you mean? What do you mean by no no face? Like just don't use his face? Oh, I gotta use his face. That's kind of the point of the thing. Um, the secret is is the point of it is kind of like if you're gonna be like I'm such a weirdo, I want to wear Joe Rogan's face on my suit, then don't be a coward about it. Don't put it in the lining. Coward. Wear your weird whatever you're doing with pride. Or whatever. Like, oh, it's in the lining? Boo. But it's like a detachable cape. And the reason why... Um... The reason why I, uh, I want to do a detachable cape is I'm like, so like, you know, the fashies are always like, uh, they're always like, uh, you know, make, breaking up and making up. You never know who's, uh, on the outs with who, um, so I'm like, so you know, when you're not friends anymore, which is probably inevitable, then you can just get a new cape. Oh yeah, yeah, no, you didn't misunderstand. Um, yeah, I'm just, like, if I spend, like, a full work day's worth of hours putting, um, like, yeah. Putting googly eyeballs and rhinestones on this thing, and I just don't bother to to draw the other thing. I think that would be pretty funny. No draw face. I got you. <laughs> Cutie just said ha. That remind oh gods, that reminds me of when one of the big neo fash orgs a few years ago fell apart because everyone was cheating with each other's spouses. I think I heard about that. Oh, Josh and I watched, um... There's a lot of animes that we were watching, and we kind of caught up to where they were, like, airing, and then there weren't any more episodes, so we, like, moved on to another thing. And, like, a number of those animes have now since released extra episodes. So, I guess I'm still procrastinating on, uh, Kaiji, because I'm like, God damn it, Kaiji, please! Please, for the love of God, do not, do not gamble fight this rich man anymore, please, I'm dying. So, we watched Smile Down the Runway, which was really cute, I liked it very much. Um, it was, uh, kind of like, what if Project Runway was a shonen? Um, 
adorable. Loved it. Um, only 12 episodes. Josh was into it. We loved it. Um, we caught up with Demon Slayer. Um, and then we caught up with, uh, Kaguya-sama Love is War. Project Runway Shonen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only got 12 episodes, but it is adorable. I loved it so much. Um, <laughs> like, I do know enough about sewing that when, like, something is, like, going down technically in, like, a Project Runway style thing that I'm like, <gasps> you know. Um, as I was, like, explaining to Josh what, like, cutting on the bias meant and, like, you know, how different fabrics, like, operate. Because this one girl was, like... <laughs> she was using a machine and I was like, where's the foot pedal? And I'm like, whoa, 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 we gotta go back. Where's the foot pedal? And Josh was like... There's a foot pedal? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's a foot pedal. So it turns out there are kinds of machines that don't need the foot pedal. But, like, I don't know that I... When I looked it up, a lot of the things that I found were people asking, how can I put a foot pedal on this? Uh, because, like, a sewing machine is, like... I don't know, it's like driving a car. Like, you get used to using it with a pedal. I hate no foot pedal when I'm sewing. I can't handle it. Too many years of foot pedal. I just don't think I could do it. Uh, I think I would be like, no thank you. And I'm already kind of like, no thank you with sewing machines. Because like, like I was explaining to Josh, like they're machines. You know, like they... They require, like, an amount of fiddle-faddle to keep them going. Um, and, like, I get really frustrated with the fiddling, like, pretty fast. And that's, like, not a good, that is not a good, like, that's not a good thing to have as a personality trait if you're trying to, uh, to sew on a sewing machine. Foot pedals are literally like brakes. Some of them are punchy. Some of them aren't. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, um, I'm like, you know, like you can, there's definitely like hand control. Like if you can't use your feet, you can drive a car with hand controls. But I, you know, if, if it's not how you originally learned, I bet it would take a while to get used to because like you're kind of used to the... Or just even when you're driving a car that's not your car, the pedals are a, just a little different to the point, or like if you're, especially if you're driving a stick shift, like where the clutch like is engaging is different on different cars. Um, it can get really low or really high sometimes, depending. Um, Yeah, they're sewing machines without foot pedals. They, um, they have, like, or at least I was not aware of this until I looked it up because, because of this anime, because I was like, uh, what? Um, because I've never even seen a, um, like, in person, like, I mean, my mother had a, my mother had a serger. She was, like, it, that's pretty intense for a home sewer. Um, and that ding dang thing used the pedal. Um, Forstein has one that uses a knee bar. Oh, nice! Um, yeah, what I found on the internet is that there are some that, um, that, like, uh, they have, like, a 
like, like they're computerized, so you can like control it that way. And I was like, huh. I mean, I already knew about the like embroidery, embroidery machines that are computerized, but I didn't know about that. This guy does not want to be stolen from. This is irritating. I have a newer one that you can hit a start stop button but that freaks me out and I never use it <laughs> yeah that's what I would be like I would just be like Ugh, I don't know about this but like I just made a pillow for Josh um it had a, a like he got it in a Kickstarter for like his favorite author and it had a picture of his favorite author on it but the shirt like he couldn't wear it anymore and I was like no probs I'll make it into a like a throw pillow for you and I just finished it it took like two months because I did it by hand because I did not want to get the sewing machine out it was worth it to me to sit there and like whip stitch an entire pillow by hand than to like try uh than to try to adjust the sewing machine I like hand sewing <laughs> I've got a really good whip stitch Well, his bones went to the bone, uh, void. Alright. Nice. Um. But yeah, I just, like, I, I was telling him that, that, like, you know, when I was a kid, my mother had, like, not only were we absolutely 100% never allowed to touch the, uh, the, the scissors near her sewing machine, um, but we were also not supposed to ever, ever, ever touch her sewing machine. Uh, you did not go into where her sewing machine was set up and fiddle with the knobs. I don't even remember being told that. That is how young I learned to never touch the sewing machine. Ever. Ever. Void went om nom nom boins, bones. <laughs> yeah, you don't look at that machine. You don't breathe on it. You don't do nothing. And she had like tape. Like she had put um like masking tape around the uh the like bobbin tension like the tension knobs and stuff and she had like made little marks and had like notes in a notebook about it like nah don't touch that thing like i mean would you like would you like to die <laughs> Cause I would not. I mean, the reason why I keep a sewing machine is that there's certain things that, like, you have to have a sewing machine for, and if you don't have a sewing machine, then, like, you're shit out of luck, but, like, uh, I'm not gonna get it out unless it's for one of those things. I got my surgery used and it came with a piece of tape with the tension settings written on it. I always live by it. Thank you, Bernice. She also had her name taped to it. Man, the, Bernice is doing the Lord's work there. That is just a full-on kindness. Oh, 
Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> no, don't ask me weird questions! <laughs> Who wants to see Akiyama? I don't need to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Well, you gotta name the machine Ber Bernice now. Here he comes! Four twenty dirt bag, Uncle. We love him. Akiyama. Look at that dragon engine glow up. And his money pyramid. Kick you with money. <laughs> Eddie's been charmed. Amazing. Reminds me of a villain in uh, Bungle Stray Dogs who literally deducts money from his accounts to increase his physical strength as his superpower. Wow! God bless the sense of use, so he used retail therapy? I guess so! The, the mots, the mots, the mop is very glitzy. I agree. Get out of here, man! This ain't no good place to be! I gotta find the exit, y'all. I got roses to plant. I can't go over. <clears throat> I don't think this is the exit. Goodbye. You guys can just stay up in there. I gotta motorate. I'm glad that your hair is uh your hair repair is going better. That's good. Um yeah, oh we also like finished um the most recent episodes of Kaguya Sama Love is War. And I'm just like these two fucking dorks are gonna kill me. Just talk to each other, Jesus Christ. And now we're back to the uh the updated episodes of Mashal. Which I really enjoy Mashal. Um Mashal is a uh comedy manga uh that's a sh basically pretty hardcore Harry Potter um parody. <laughs> I mean, to be fair to the characters in Kaguya-sama Love is War, um, like, they're teenagers. So, it's like, the fact that they don't, like, that they're very 
tense and tight about liking each other and don't know how to communicate yet is somewhat understandable and they and they come to a like you basically the end of the part that we, I don't know if it's going to go forward from here I I I it seems pretty wrapped up but like the part that they get to is like hey we're going to be in a relationship that means you can't like hide from each other and like I liked that I thought that was good Mashal is fantastic! I love that Kaguya-sama is structured like a battle shonen, even though it's romance. Yes! I love that about it, too! They're like, whoever does their love confession first loses. That's the battle. And so they both like each other, and they both know that they like each other, but getting the other one to con to love confess first is the war. Oh, a sun shower! Nice! Yeah, I definitely prefer Sun Shower to uh, what I grew up with people calling that. It's very. Why would. Why? Um. Alright. I already, like, murdered all these songs, so I'm just gonna pick one for fun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I love this one. Whoa, 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 I'm gonna tell the grandchildren that I'm never gonna have that Mashal was the real Harry Potter all along. It's better anyway. I read the manga too, it was so good. <laughs> You'll tell the kiddos on your block when you're a little old person, anime evangelist Babushka Cryptid Vibes. <laughs> So many things, but I like them all. That description. All right, nice. All right, so sing, sing, sing. Well, I think I think we've we've got to sing the dishwasher song, so we can get some more bond points. Yeah. ビジュアルカズマ。カムフロムニッポン。ネクストステップイズ。好きになれる人。好きになれたなら。Here we go. 
Does anyone know what dishwasher is in Japanese? Cause I don't. Oh, it, oh my god! Oh yeah! <laughs> the kids will still know about Jojo! He's trying to sound so cool, but we know, Kiryu, we know what you're focusing on. I'm like, is he saying dishwasher in Japanese? I don't know. I heard a point where I thought he said washita, but that could be anything. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta look this up. I have to look this up. Not now, but later. Yes. Now we're gonna do one more song. Anybody have a preference? Shout it out. I'll take the first request. We've got Hell Stew. We've got Judgment. The one about my dad's boyfriend. The sad song about Nishki. Hell Stew. All right, I got it. Got pastas on the quick draw. Gonna put the shit posters okay. in the stew.
the shit posters are going in the stew. I probably am going in the stew. I mean, what is this entire nudie suit project if not an extended ridiculous shit post that no one asked for? Um, but they're getting anyway because that's that's what that's what happens. Adachi with the leak, how does he manage to look sinister with a leak? <laughs> the devil makeup is very powerful. Um, alright y'all, that's the stream. Have I ever been booped with a leak? Uh, thank god, no. They're very sandy. Uh. And that's, I, I don't like that about them. I'm like, why are you all filled up with sand? Ew. And if you don't clean them good enough, and do I look like I am, do I look like, do I seem like the kind of person who's good at cleaning vegetables? Because if I do, that's wrong. And I'm giving you wrong impressions. Because, like, I'm not, and then the sand gets into the thing, and then it, I crunch it with my teeth, and I just want to fall over and die. Worst. Uh, I, leaks attack me. Um, alright y'all, that's the end of the stream. Hopefully, uh, y'all had a good time. I know I definitely had a good time. Um, I'm gonna put the links in the chat. Links in the chat. Uh, we got VOD archives. Um, I'm also doing clips if you'd like smaller pieces of a good time. Um, I also have a Discord server. If you can see the Discord server link, you can come to the Discord. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you to everybody who, uh, hangs out with me. Thank you to everybody who's in the chat. Y'all help to make things so much more fun for me and more fun for y'all, and I appreciate it so much. Thank you to everybody who comes by and watches the stream live and doesn't chat. Everybody who watches the stream while it's live helps to make things so much more fun for, um, for me and fun for y'all, and I just appreciate it so much. It, like, helps things, like, go in the right direction. It helps people to find us, and that makes things more fun. Um, thank you... Also, to everyone who watches the VODs, it's an incredible compliment that you would want to do that, even though you can't interact. So I appreciate that so much. Um, hey, if you want to watch it again, that's a huge compliment. Time zones are a thing. I get it. So thank you so much. Um, thank you also, most of all, to my subscribers um, and to uh, Hawk and Forstein, our mods. Uh, Y'all are bees knees. You are the bestie bests. I appreciate you so much. And, um, yeah, that's it. So, uh, that's gonna be it for me. I'm gonna go plant roses. My name, um, Josh is gonna do most of the work, but I am going to put, uh, dirt in a hole. Um, my name is Allie. I'm from OK To Be Fat because it is OK To Be Fat. This has been Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. I will see you on Wednesday if you can make it, and if not, I'll see you when you can. Um, that's it. I gotta go. Have a good rest of your day or night. Be as good as you can. Alright, bye!